Building a style guide manually takes forever, but what if AI could build it within seconds? Today, we're gonna take a look at an incredible style guide generator from Reloom that allows you to export to Figma and Webflow. First, we're gonna take a look at the classic manual way of creating a style guide. Then we're gonna take a look at how Reloom creates it with their new AI method. And finally, we're gonna export it into Figma to see how it actually does and if there's a problem with the way that they do it. So let's take a look at what a style guide is to begin with. Right now we're inside of Figma and here we can see all the different layers that make up a style guide. Now this is a very extensive style guide, so I don't expect anybody's style guide to actually look like this unless you have a very large company that actually needs this kind of stuff. But for here we have a color scale of gray to blue, red, indigo, purple, all the basic spectrum of colors. And then we have the same scale for typography from display to all the way to text super small. Now I actually did a video about how to do this. So the link to watch that is up here if you wanna go the manual way. But the beautiful thing about AI and Reloom is now we have an automatic way to create these style guides. Now this is a small version of what I've got here, but let's take a look at how Reloom does it. So right now, this is my demo project. I have an example of one of the Reloom projects here. So this is just a simple bank demo project. And down here we have, or up here I should say, we have got sitemap, wireframe, and then style guide. So style guide is what I wanna take a look at today. But the really cool thing about this, I've been playing with it for a little while, and I think it's incredible what they've done here. So let me show you what they've done and how this might be better than the manual way of doing it, and even if it is actually better. So I am going to unlock this for now, and then we can start over. So I'm gonna click this surprise me button, and it's just gonna completely redo everything. I'm gonna clip it, click it a couple times until I like something. Usually I like orange, if you can tell. All right, web orange. And then let's maybe make it a little bit brighter. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna lock that. I'm gonna lock this neutral. And basically what we can do here is when we click on the main of our color, we can select one of the millions and billions of colors available and it will automatically create that color scale. Now there's another tool out there that allows you to do a similar thing, which is that you have to manually plug in your primary color and then it'll give you a color scale based on that based on the Tailwind CSS color generators from 50 to 950. So Reloom is kind of doing the same thing for you. It's creating all these different shades that allow you to create this color scale without being too much of a hassle when it comes to selecting a color. And this is kind of like a slimmed down version of what you might find in those other color generators. But I think for most people, if not the majority of people, this is gonna be more than okay. Now, when we do that, we'll see that it's number one, changing the color on the button here. And number two, this other button is inheriting that color from somewhere else. But before we get into that, let's take a look at this other thing, red ribbon. I can actually just get rid of that so we can have a more simple UI and color. Uh, but let's see, now that I've got these two locked, we can actually shuffle here and it'll give us different versions of colors that will match these two. So for example, all right, I like this Azure Radiance Electric Violet. Cool, that's fine for me. So now that we've got this, if we have, for example, in our demo project, we've got a banking app, maybe this fancy kind of text doesn't necessarily fit it. We want something that's a little bit more close to N26 branding. So let's see, I'm gonna pick something sans serif. And then, all right, let's go Open Sans because why not? We can just click this one. So let's go with Open Sans, all right. And then it's, giving, it's trying to give us a secondary font, which we can either just pick the same one or go for a really simple one. I'm just gonna go with Open Sans as well because I usually like to just have one font that is used for both because before you try to pick two different fonts, it's hard enough to get a design that looks good with one font. So that's just my, my two cents on that. But anyways, now this is looking a little bit boring. So what they've done here, before we go into something too deep, but we have these colors, okay? And if we click on the actual sections that we created from the wireframe here, from our demo style guide here, from a demo wireframe, if we click on the actual sections, it'll use shades of the colors that we selected, the font and other properties that we can change to create that different design. So we can either pick variations of color from the neutral white, the orange, or the violet that we picked. So let's go ahead and see what the violet looks like. 
and I'm just gonna click a bunch of times until we see something else. And we can hold command here to see variations of the of the shades, which is absolutely insane. All right, so I think something like that would be good. So something a little bit darker, right? Basically, we can do this with every single every single section here. And to go a little bit faster, we can actually shuffle this by clicking space and it'll do our entire landing page with variations of all the colors that we picked here. Now this is kind of difficult because if your main color is gonna be orange, then it, it surprises me that it would suggest orange. But you can just click until you see something that makes more sense for your design. But anyways, let's go into buttons and forms. Now this is cool because it allows us to see, number one, the, the hover state but that's a separate thing. But number two, it allows us to change the actual angle of our button. So in this case, I mean, I like a round button, but not too round. And here it's giving us different options, but you know what? I'm a sucker for minimal. I'm just making this, I'm just going back to the default design, I feel. Let's make it a little bit, a little bit different, right? For the sake of, of the video here, okay? And then we've also got options for the cards. So down here, these are the cards. And we can do the same thing. So the radius, we can change that. And I'm gonna go with the middle one. And then we can see all the different options here. Now, if we add this edgy, we can see that that changes for the buttons as well, for any forms, if we have them down here. So we can see how that's actually changing. All right, cool. Now, say that I'm happy with this design. You know, it's got the H3s that I like, the H2s. Yeah, the cards look right. I actually just want to, oh, let me go back to that. Let me add in a fake image to see how it looks like when we export that. So just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna upload maybe one of my uh, one of my thumbnails, because why not? We can actually see how the quality of the export is as well for the image, which should be good. It's one of my previous videos. If you guys wanna go ahead and watch that, quick plug. But let's go ahead and export this on to Figma. So it gives us a quick tutorial on how to do this. So I'm gonna do it with you guys, even though I've already done this, but just so you guys understand how to do this. So open in Figma, we can click that. It'll give us the link to the community file. And all we need to do is click open. I'm gonna select the project that I'm in, and then it opens that community kit for you. Okay, so this is generating a brand new file. The issue with that is if you already have a project set up, then this might be a little bit more confusing and you kind of need to paste it one place and then another place. But anyways, then I'm gonna click Command and Copy to bring up this window here and I'm gonna type in Reloom. Now this is gonna pop up the Reloom plugin, which allows us to Number one, find all the projects that we have here for the actual style guide. So imagine you've got lots of different websites, lots of different uh, versions of this. It'll basically ask you to, to pick which one. So we're gonna go with Rebank, which is our fake bank project. And then we have the three different options here. Which one do you want to import? Style guide and concept, wireframes, or just the sitemap. So style guide and concept, go with that one and it's gonna take a little while. I've found that this takes a couple of minutes, which in the name of technology seems like a long time, but when you realize the time that you're saving by creating a, a style guide with this method, with AI, then it does save you a very long time. All right, so two minutes have passed, and in that time, we've managed to import our entire thing. Now, I'm sure that in the future, it'll get a little bit faster, but again, let's be real here. Two minutes is not a long time. And as we saw in that pop-up, it's saving us a very, very long time. So with that being said, what do we got here? What has been imported? Number one, we didn't see it in the actual wireframe, but we have a mega nav here. And so that's just gonna be where we have that. So I'm just gonna delete it for now because it looks, it, it doesn't make sense for, for the video, just visually. All right. Right, so we've got that. So we've got the desktop and the mobile, and we were wondering, we were wondering about the the quality of the image, and it actually is pretty good. So now I'm just gonna get rid of that, so we can stop seeing my face. So experiment achieved. But anyways, next we've got let's see the most important thing here: the styles, right? If we go down here into wireframe and style guide, we can see this. This is absolutely phenomenal. This is insane to me. You remember the the file here that I showed you where in the video, in the tutorial, it took around, I don't know, like 20 minutes and whatever, it's fast. It's, fa it's a fast way to do this, but what you can see here is one text scale, one color scale and like two buttons. In this case, what do we have? We have number one, an insanely detailed design kit in that we have all these different buttons, all these different scales, icons, the different radius, the different, I mean, the logos themselves, we can, we can change so that it updates into the actual design and all that. And then the color scale as well is 
all done for us. So all these colors are imported in the form of variables. So we have this color scale to play around with. The buttons are all done with the radius that we picked, with the hover states, everything is done. And for example, if we go into assets and we pop in a quick button, let's see here. If we just add that in, we'll see that we have not only the button, but also the style for primary, secondary, tertiary. If it's a link, if we want it to be small, large, alternate, not alternate, icon, leading, trailing, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff, which is absolutely insane because we did all of this in like 10 seconds, realistically, of the actual, of the actual work. Now, where does this fail, in my opinion? In my opinion, if you already have a project, then this might not be for you. Now, this is really good for projects that are starting from scratch. And if you have, for example, a project that doesn't have such a detailed style guide like this, then it might make sense to actually create it inside of Reloom, export it, and then just have that as your actual style guide and then go reconnecting everything inside of your file. But that's kind of a, a long-winded way and it might make sense to just keep the, the way you're going. But if you have a brand new project and you need to create a style guide and the wireframes and everything, then this is a no-brainer. It's absolutely phenomenal the way it works. And in terms of the workflow from Webflow as well, you can imagine that it's gonna be absolutely insane. Now, if you wanted to export it to Webflow instead of Figma, this is kind of like a last minute thing, but all you need to do is change it up here from Figma into Webflow. You have also got React and straight up HTML. So you can do that, export it, and then you've got yourself the same exact thing, except it's inside of Webflow as an actual website that is ready to launch. So that's absolutely fantastic. Well guys, that covers Reloom style guide generator and exporting to Figma and also Webflow, creating all these different style guides and being able to recreate this and send it to so many different clients and projects. It's such a fast and effortless way of doing this stuff. So in my opinion, I recommend that you guys do this and try it out if you have a new client to do this with. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.